Welcome to Your Brand Amplified, the podcast where we interview marketers, publicists, and brands to learn their stories, what makes them tick, and tips and tricks that make a difference. I am thrilled to welcome Nicole Bandis to Your Brand Amplified today. I'm your host, Annika Jackson. Nicole is the founder of Virtual A-Team, and it is a service agency that helps overwhelmed coaches and consultants achieve their goals. I think that VAs, like so many things, are such an important part of any business's strategy. And so, Nicole, I'm really excited to get into what you do, the approach. We were talking a little bit about some other things that people might think they need to be, they might not. Before we get into that, how did you start your journey into becoming a virtual assistant expert and founding this company? Yeah. So thanks for having me on the show. I'm so glad to be here. Excited to be chatting with you for sure. And my background, I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. I started, you know, everybody says, oh, well, when did you know you were going to be an entrepreneur? And I've known since I was a kid. But what really sort of started escalating things, you know, I got a degree in psychology. I started doing productivity coaching and I was teaching people how to be more productive and helping them learn how to really make the most out of their time. And about 10 years ago, actually it'd be 10 years ago in July, I don't know when this episode will drop, but my husband and I lost one of our sons. He was three weeks from his 18th birthday. And whenever somebody sort of experiences loss like that, most of us have this tendency to go through and really think about what does that mean? You know, I mean, it gives you that reflection period. And one of the things that I realized was that I had no coulda, woulda, shouldas. Hmm. And what I mean by that is I was very deliberate with my boys and how I spent my time. So when it came to like, just as an example, Little League, if it was practice, I had that conversation with them to say, hey, I'm going to be there for your Little League practice, but I'm probably going to be working on my laptop at the same time or returning phone calls at the same time. But when it comes to game time, you've got my 100% full attention. So I was very deliberate with how I spent my time with them and very clear with them that if they needed more from me, here's the way to communicate that with me. Here's how to ask about that. But at the same time, you're not my primary and sole focus. Mm -hmm. You're just one of my focuses. And I want to make sure that you get the time that you deserve, but also that I have time to work on these other things. So I never had any woulda, coulda, shouldas. And I realized as I was going through that, that I needed a bigger way to help people also not have those coulda, woulda, shouldas. Teaching individuals on being productive got me so far. But at the end of the day, 90% of them were like, Nicole, I just need to delegate. I need to get this stuff off my plate. And I don't know how to do it. I don't know what to delegate. I don't know how to hire the team to delegate to. I don't know any of it. Can you just do it for me? (laughs) So I took that option and I said, yeah, I can look at this. I can figure it out. I can hire the team and I can be that delegation whisperer for you so that I can help you up to have time for what matters most to you. And that, that's sort of the foundation of where Virtual A Team got its start. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Getting a little emotional here. I have a teenager mm-hmm. and I know that like you, I feel that I'm a better mom because she sees me doing my work and doing other things and she understands what that looks like. And that sometimes I might pick her up late from school, but it's for a good reason, right? It's I have a meeting yeah. that's going to last maybe that extra 10 minutes and then I'm going to be there to get her and then I will be there as often as I can for all of her activities because I do feel like that's our biggest reason for being, I guess, is to make sure that our kids do go off to be fully formed adults. And I can't even imagine the pain that you went through and that you still feel. Yeah. I mean, even before this experience happened, I used to tell friends and family when they were going through something hard, I said, you know, sometimes the best gifts are wrapped in the ugliest paper Mm. and you have to be willing to unwrap the gift to see what's inside. And so many times when we experience something like this, or even 
maybe not as significant, but a trauma or something, it hurts so much that we're not willing to accept the gift. The mm -hmm. fact is I can't return that gift. I can't get my son back. Yeah. So the one thing I can do is figure out what the gift is, what that empowers me to do for others. So I don't feel like it's entirely in vain. Mm -hmm. I feel like at least I got something out of it and I can use that to give back to others in in some way. Yeah. And thank you for that. I think to that point, particularly after this pandemic, we've all kind of reframed our lives and looked at what does it mean to be alive? And how do we want our work to fit into our lives? Not instead of making our lives fit around our work. Mm, and yes. I think, again, that VAs and looking at how you can delegate effectively is really important. Now, I've tried using VAs for different things. Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. I have a great one right now for my podcast. <laughs> it's just been a huge huge, huge asset for my productivity and just making sure I'm actually getting things done because like many of us, I do this, but I have my day job and then I have other stuff going on. So when you started it, talk us through that process. How did you find the right people to be on your team? And then did you have to offer them special training? And did you find people who had already been through some training and certifications or just had the right skill set to then offer up to these coaches and consultants? Yeah. So there's sort of two different paths that you can take. The path that I took initially, because I didn't know the full scope of what I didn't know. Yes. So I figured it's going to be better for me to hire people that do know, that do have those answers. So if I want to have somebody do social media, I'm not having to train them how to do social media. They already know how to do social media. If I want somebody to work on websites, I don't need to know how to do the websites. I just need to know how to tell them to work on the websites. So initially, I took that path of hiring people that were smarter than me. Mm -hmm. It meant that I paid more because, you know, they came with a skill base built in. Mm -hmm. The other path that I could have taken and that I actually do take a little bit more frequently now is that I hire people for personality and for the way that they work, not the skills that they have, because I can teach them the skills and I can take them through that training process. And I have systems and I have procedures set up for various things so that it's a little bit more turnkey and I don't have to have that high level of skill set. Mm -hmm. So if you know your systems and processes already, and you just need somebody to do those things for you, then by all means, you can hire a very efficient VA who is a doer and just does what you tell them to do. But if you're the kind of entrepreneur and a lot of them out there are who doesn't even know where to start, you're just like, I just need to get stuff off my plate. I don't know what that looks like. I don't have my processes in place. Then you might want to hire a higher caliber individual, oftentimes an online business manager mm -hmm. who's going to help you get those processes in place who's going to help you develop everything within your business. They're not a coach. They're not going to tell you how to build your business, but you know they're certainly going to help you with all of those details of the things that you don't know. Frankly, what I see a lot of times when people don't have success with VAs is because they're expecting the VA to know how to do the things. Mm -hmm. But most VAs are more the caliber of tell me what to do and how to do it, and then I'll get it done for you. Mm -hmm. Instead of, I'm an expert and I can do it for you. Right. Yeah. And do you primarily work with VAs who are US and OBMs who are US based or overseas or a mix? I work with a mix. Most of our OBMs are US based because our clients tend to like to be able to have somebody that's on US hours. Mm -hmm. There's a language barrier sometimes. So they want to have somebody that they can communicate easily with. That being said, if the hours aren't an issue for you or you don't have, like I tell people in transparency, I have a really hard time with accents. You can speak very clear English, but if you have an accent, I struggle with it. I know that about me. It's not my favorite thing about me, but it is a barrier to working with individuals that are overseas. If I have to communicate with you via Zoom and I can't understand what you're talking about, that's going to be a struggle. Mm -hmm. Insider tip though, now Zoom allows you to set captioning so you can actually read what they're <laughs> saying while they're saying it. So even if they have an accent, you can clarify what it is that's being said. So 
Nice. Uh, that's just a little <laughs> secret hidden tip. So it depends on what your needs are and what your comfort level is. There are a lot of overseas VAs that are fabulous and you know are well worth taking that route, but you got to know what your limitations are around that. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I think that's really important because we don't know what we don't know. Right. And so I think to your point, the way that you started your business is probably a good path for most people where you worked with people who were experts to get you to a certain point. And then you were able to say, okay, now I know exactly what systems and processes I have, and I can teach that to people and delegate appropriately. So yeah, yeah. what are some cases where somebody should look at an online business manager or a VA when they're first starting out? And again, they don't really know exactly what they need. So how would you help them figure out what they need and map out what their virtual team might look like? Well, the first thing I would do is make sure that you have enough bankroll to cover the payroll for mm-hmm. somebody. If you're first starting out, oftentimes we're bootstrapping and you know we might think, oh, I'm going to invest in somebody and they're going to provide a return on that investment. And the return on the investment for outsourcing things is not necessarily financial. Mm -hmm. So if you think they're going to make you more money, that's not necessarily the case. So you have to really be prepared that this is an expense that's coming out of your pocket. It may get you to where you can increase your revenue faster because you're more focused on doing the things that generate revenue or creating the products or services that generate revenue, but there's no guarantee of that. So you have to be willing to invest that for a period of time, You know, usually three to six months minimum, mm. and be prepared for that. But if you're at that point where you're like, yes, I have the cash flow to do this, or yes, I have the bankroll to do this, and I want to get to that next level, then a virtual an online business manager is going to really help you to sit down and look at where is your time being spent? How mm-hmm. is it not being productive? They're going to help you identify those areas where things could be delegated. You know, they're also going to help you with efficiency. So are there things that you should just trash? You should mm-hmm. stop spending time on Twitter because your leads are not on Twitter, <laughs> you know? So as much as you might enjoy that, it might not be the best use of your time. So they're going to help you figure out how to prioritize those things and what things are going to be the most efficient to delegate first. Hmm. So a lot of times we take our clients through a time tracking process at the very beginning. If they're like, I really don't even know where to start. We'll take them through a time tracking process, help them to identify where their time is being spent and then what is going to be the most beneficial to take off their plate first. Hmm. Okay. That makes a lot of sense uh, because I think that's always the struggle of like, how much time are we spending in the business versus on the business? And what's really going to be revenue generating for the work that we need to do as entrepreneurs and small businesses to make sure that we have that money coming in so that we can then pay a team to do the work. But then we also make money and hopefully can decrease the amount of hours that we work. And speaking of, you're about 20 hours a week right now that you have to invest in your business because you've created these systems and processes. This is like, time management and productivity is your jam. When you started this, was it that like that 20 hours or did you have to front load a lot more hours to get the business going? And then you're able to say, okay, I have all my systems and I have all my processes and I know exactly what people are doing for whom. Yeah, I was probably 30 or 40 hours at the beginning. So I wasn't like the hustle mindset. I was never that. And partly because I'm also a chronic migraine sufferer. So one of my biggest motivations for putting in systems and processes is If I'm the one that has to work with the clients and I get a migraine, the clients are not happy with that. They don't want to have to put up with me being out for the count for three days in a row. Mm -hmm. So it was in my best interest to remove me as much as possible from the client facing activities. So even in the beginning, that was the goal, that was the focus. And I could have built the business faster had I put in more hours, but I didn't have the capacity based on my physical limitations to do that. So I've always been limited in the number of hours that I could put in. So it was a trade-off. I grew slower, but I was able to take care of my physical needs in that process. Yeah. 
No, good for you for also recognizing that. We feel like we have to be in that hustle mentality a lot of times. And I've been reading a lot of things about efficiency or even like do less about how if you really structure your time correctly, you can spend less time, but achieve a lot better, bigger results with that time because it's specific, right? Instead of just like many of us, I'm like, I want to be better at time blocking and time management, but I'm like all over the place (laughs) with my schedule. Well, you know, I equate time with money in a lot of respects. And in this example, what I would say is you could have $100,000 and put it into a savings account where you're getting maybe half a percent interest rate. Mm -hmm. Or you could take that $100,000 and invest it in, let's say, a CD. And I don't know all that much about investing, but this is the basics of it. A CD that's going to get you 5% interest. Mm -hmm. It's not about the quantity as much it is the quality, you could actually invest significantly less money in a CD and get the same amount of return. Mm -hmm. But if you invest more money, you get a bigger return. So the same works with time and managing your time. It's not necessarily about trying to invest more time because frankly, at the end of the day, we all have the same (laughs) amount of time every day. You may not be able to invest more time But if you are very strategic and deliberate with the time you invest and invest it in ways that are going to have a bigger return, then you can invest less time and still have the same return as if you invested more time less efficiently. (laughs) Yeah. Hopefully that didn't totally confuse everybody. (laughs) No, no, it made sense. I think one of the issues that we also have a lot of times as entrepreneurs and small business is that we're bad at delegating because it's all in our heads, right? And then so trying to put that on paper and give it to somebody else, it's like, oh, but that's going to take too much time for me to do that, which it really doesn't. It takes setup time, but then can hand it over and create that efficiency. So what are some of the things that you see entrepreneurs struggle with the most when they're trying to learn? Because I feel like it is a skill to delegate effectively. Yeah, for sure. And and honestly, we were actually discouraged from delegating all the way back in school. If you think about it, it's like no looking at their homework, no having somebody else do your homework for you. You know, Mm -hmm. so we learned this mindset of don't be efficient, do your own work, you know, do your own work. And So we grew up with this philosophy of, I got to do my own work. We were never taught how to be efficient delegators. So some of the challenges, and there's different ways to address each of them, but some of them are, you know, I don't know how to capture the systems. I don't know how to get them out of my head onto the plate. And one of the easiest ways to do this, don't sit down and try and write it out. That's too tedious. Mm. Get a tool like Loom, which Mm -hmm. you can use to record videos, or I actually use TechSmith Capture. I think there's a different one for Mac computers, but TechSmith Capture is free. You hit the record button and you walk yourself through actually doing the process. Nice. And if you do this a few times, then you can hand those videos over to your VA and say, okay, now I want this converted into an actual SOP, standard operating procedure. Mm -hmm. And they can then take that video and watch it and pull out the details that are needed. So you don't have to do it. You're not spending any more time because you hit record and then you're doing the process as if you were going to do it anyway, which you are doing it right now. So it streamlines that for sure. And it's just so much more efficient to do it that way. Very cool. And then another challenge is, again, knowing what to delegate because you're so overwhelmed that you're like, I don't even know where to start. So working with that online business manager or doing some time tracking is going to help you with knowing where to start. You don't have to have all the answers before you begin. You just have to have the willingness to go through that process and figure it out. What are some of your favorite time tracking tools or methodologies that people can really understand where their time is going beyond their Google calendar? That's definitely not showing every, you know, right. We're not putting everything in. (laughs) Yeah. There's some fabulous tools out there. Toggle is one of them. Toggle is an online app that you can use. I actually just recently discovered the other day, this is an app for your phone and it's called 
simple time tracking. Hmm. I'd never heard of this before, but literally you can just set up very basic categories on your phone and then switch between, you know, it's like, okay, now I'm doing this. Now I'm doing this. And it gives you notifications of when you're not tracking your time, which is one of the biggest barriers is we get so busy. And, and I truly honestly believe that the vast majority of entrepreneurs have some level of ADD. Big believer there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Even if not diagnosed, <laughs> I think we do. And so it's easy to forget to track time. Yeah. So this app will actually ping you based on the frequency that you want. I've got it set to every 10 minutes. You don't have to have it that neurotic, <laughs> but to say, hey, by the way, you're not tracking your time. And then I'm like, oh, shoot, I need to go in and hit the button to tell what I'm actually doing mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you great charts to show you where's your time going and how is it being spent. And then there's fabulous Excel spreadsheets, but I just like this app because I'm always looking at my phone. So <laughs> regardless of what's going on, you know, the phone is sitting in front of me. Fortunately, right now I have it muted. So in case any <laughs> notifications come up, it doesn't ping me, but our phones tend to be right there with us mm -hmm. almost all the time. So it's just an easy device to be able to access and know, oh, I've got to be tracking my time for this or that. Yeah, definitely. What are And it's free. You can't beat oh, free. Yeah. Free tools are always <laughs> fantastic. I don't mind paying for tools as long as I've been able to already test them out and make sure that right. they're the right tools to use for productivity for myself. Yeah. Yeah. And they have some effectiveness for you. You validated that they're going to be useful for you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to share any stories of clients? Maybe that they were working with you, they knew they needed to delegate, but weren't quite sure about using virtual assistants or OBMs, and then it just changed their lives and their businesses? Yeah, you know, we get this a lot, you know, because we're structured a little bit different than a traditional VA would be. Mm -hmm. We really do a lot of the support and training of helping our clients learn how to delegate effectively. I, I mean, we even go through a process of teaching them how to communicate their needs so that there's not a ton of back and forth like, okay, well, you said you want me to do social media posts. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Well, I just need you to create something. Well, you got to give me a little bit more example. Yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and there's this huge ping pong that can happen if you don't know how to delegate effectively. Our average client probably stays with us. I haven't run the numbers recently, but generally between 18 and 24 months mm. before they get to the point where they're like, okay, now I need to hire somebody in house. Ah. And one of our clients that just recently graduated <laughs> from <laughs> our services, she was actually with us for four years years. And she started out and she was all over the place. She's like, I don't have a project management system. My email is on overwhelm. I probably have 10,000 emails in my inbox. And frankly, I just want to hit the nuclear <laughs> option and delete <laughs> yes. all of them. She was a financial advisor and an accountant, tax account. And I want to hire additional accountants, but I don't have the systems in place to hand off the work. So we began with helping to figure out what were those top priorities in her business, what was going to ease the pain. We go for two things in the beginning. We go for a rapid result, something that's going to free up their time fast mm -hmm. so that they have the time to give to us to delegate more effectively. And then a slightly longer, but a bigger win, something that's really going to you know, set them on the course for future improvements. So we started with her inbox and just literally saying, okay, let's figure out the rules. Let's figure out, you know, what we can respond to on your behalf and what can we delegate and going through that process. That was the big win, getting that off of her plate. And it dramatically increased her client satisfaction because the clients were now getting responses. Oh yeah. Which they weren't before. <laughs> and then we moved on to setting her up with a project management system and creating the processes, which are different than procedures. Procedures are more like step by step, do this, do this, do this, short kind of things. That's a standard operating procedure. A process is usually a bigger, longer term kind of thing, like an onboarding process. So mm -hmm. how do I onboarding my clients? How do I handle the clients step by step after they've been onboarded? So once we had that project management tool in place for her, we then helped her create the onboarding process and the ongoing how to handle clients so that she had a process that she could train new accountants to bring onto the team and expand her business from there. 
Nice. And how has the role of a VA and OBM changed since you started your business? Have you seen changes in the industry and what people need or want? You know, I think the biggest change is awareness because COVID sent everybody home and all of a sudden everybody became aware that, oh my gosh, remote work is an option. <laughs> so, <laughs> so many small business owners thought that they had to hire somebody local and that could either come into their office or at least work from home that was close, but that's so not necessary for the most part. Obviously, there are still certain situations where it makes sense to hire local, but the vast majority of individuals can hire somebody that's remote. And the tools have just been increasing significantly. I mean, we've had Zoom for a while. We had things before that. Those things have been around um, for a long time, but not everybody was well-versed in using them. So if yeah. I was to tell a prospective client, yeah, we're going to jump on a Zoom call, they'd be like, <laughs> what is this alien technology? <laughs> um, so I think just the improvements in technology have allowed people to communicate with individuals all over the world in a much more streamlined fashion and project management tools continue to improve. So I think those are the biggest changes. Mm, yeah. And where do you see yourself going and virtual A team? Or do you have other things that you're going to start rolling out that we should be looking forward to in the new year? Well, I'm definitely doing a lot more virtual trainings to help people learn how to delegate smarter nice. and you know be more efficient delegators. Even if they don't hire our team, they're at least being able to access those resources to learn how to do it on their own, to learn how to go out and find and hire and train and manage their own team member, because not everybody wants the expense of doing it, removing themselves entirely from that. So I think it's the best option because then you don't have to learn how to do all that stuff. But for those that do want to learn those skills, we're going to have options for them to learn those skills, even if they don't hire our team for that. That's going to be the biggest change going forward. We've never offered those programs before. It was all in-house and we offered them to our clients, but now we're going to release those. Release the beast. Yeah, that's really exciting. I think it's going to help a lot more people understand how to more effectively use VAs. Yes. Because it's one of those things where, like I said at the beginning, I've had uh, chances where I've used them and it has not been effective. And I think I didn't have that training to know how to work with them effectively, right? right? And perhaps whoever was managing them didn't know my tone of voice and how I wanted to have my emails show up in people's inboxes or things like that. But then I've had really great experiences as well. And it's been people just cold emailing me, right? So yeah. knowing that, okay, I can actually <laughs> systemize, I can learn a better process for this and that there are teams like yours that I can go mm -hmm. to, to say, hey, here's what I'm looking for. What would the investment be? And learning, I think, kind of tap into one of those things that you said about, you know, sometimes they don't know your voice. It's learning to know when is it a you issue that you're not helping them do as good a job as possible versus when is this really, they're just not getting it. They're mm. not qualified to do this effectively. And honestly, as hard as this may sound, more often than not, it's a you issue. You're not training them to get there. It's very rare to find somebody right out of the box that can nail everything for you. And it's about having the patience and knowing how to train them to get them to that point that is the point that's going to differentiate success from failure. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much. This has been very insightful. And I did want to ask one more question about entrepreneurship, because you did mention making sure that people have money in the bank to actually pay somebody. So if somebody's going to invest in an OBM or a virtual assistant, I know that investment can be a wide range, right? Depending on what you're having them do. Are they US-based? Are they overseas? All of that stuff. But what are some of the things that you recommend that people have? When do they know that they can afford to outsource? Or is there a range that they should be looking at to make sure that yeah. they have in the bank or whatever? The first key question you're going to have is what level of service are you going to be looking for? So mm -hmm. if you're looking for that, hey, I can give these people as much support and direction as they need. I just need somebody that's going to do it for me. Then you can have a lower level of investment involved in that. And if you need somebody that's going to be more expert and you're going to need higher levels of support, then you need to look at that. And you can start exploring those two options and get a few quotes around that and then plan on three to six months having that in the bank as a cushion. 
Hmm. So, you know, if you're getting a quote at $500 a month for those services, then you want to have a minimum of $1,500 banked to cover that. You know, that's going to be for your more of your basic admin VA kind of level service is about, you know, $1,500. Then if it's at the higher tier, you're going to want to probably have around 6,000 banked just to kind of have that cushion to know, yeah, I've got this covered for a few months and I'm not going to like have to fire them because I can't afford it anymore. (laughs) <laughs> so before you've actually seen the progress, because it usually takes a month to two months to really get comfortable with your team and get them comfortable with you. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's like any relationship that you have, friend, dating, marriage, work, school, whatever. It takes time to really get to know each other, to integrate each other's personalities and working styles. 100%. Yep. Yeah. Nicole, is there anything else that you want to share today that our audience should know about you, about looking for VAs or entrepreneurship? Just don't be afraid to take that first step. You know, nothing changes until you're willing to take the first step. And for you, that first step might be just finding out what resources are available and identifying what are some of those needs. So I'm going to start time tracking next week. And for one or two weeks, I'm going to try and track and figure out how desperately do I really need somebody to come in and help out? Or is it manageable for me right now? Mm -hmm. Take one step, whatever that is, to look for that solution for you. And until you take it, it's just kind of an idea. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And do you have a favorite quote or mantra or words that you live by that you'd share with us today? I'm still trying to equate how this works with business. I think on a little level it does, but not all who wander are lost is probably my favorite quote by all means. And it's just, you know, sometimes we don't take the direct path. I guess that's the analogy to entrepreneurship. There is no direct path in entrepreneurship. There's no point A to point B straight line. Sometimes we wander before we get there. It doesn't mean we're lost. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. I can definitely relate to that. (laughs) And what is the easiest way for people to follow you on socials, to check out your website? And just to find you. Yeah, you can go to virtualateam.com and, and that's got all of my socials on it. So you don't have to try and remember all of these different places. <laughs> Any place that I would connect with you is on their virtualateam.com. Fantastic. And we'll also put that in the show notes for everybody. Thank you so much, Nicole, for sharing your story, your journey, how you started your business and how you took that ugly wrapping paper and turned it into a gift that you're now sharing with so many others. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. And thank you to our audience for listening to another episode with another fantastic expert. I'll be back again in a few days. And be sure to also check out Nicole's podcast, Coaches Copilot, your online business manager. I will link that in the show notes as well for you. Until next time. Want more? Check out amplifywithannica.com or follow me on socials at amplifywithannica.com.